Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This time out, we're checking out the incredibly powerful Apogee Symphony desktop audio interface. Let's get started. This is the Apogee Symphony desktop audio interface. It's incredibly feature laden, as I mentioned, incredibly powerful. It allows you to do tons of things while also maintaining incredible audio quality. In fact, the converters in this device are based on the mastering card converters for the rack mount symphony system. So you know they're top of the line. Apogee's converters have always been great and these are some of the best they've ever made. We've got a total of 10 inputs and that's two mic line and instrument level inputs and eight digital inputs. We've also got 14 outputs. So we've got stereo audio outputs, we've got digital outputs, we've got headphone outputs, a full complement available here. It connects to your Mac, your PC, or your iOS device using USB-C. A big part of what makes the Apogee Symphony desktop so cool is the Control 2 software that comes with it. Now this software allows you to both set up latency-free mixing as well as access plugins. Now those plugins can run either on the DSP that's inside the Symphony desktop or they can run native in your computer. And in fact, you can work back and forth very easily using what they call dual path technology. It's a very efficient way to work. It allows you to overdub, to track, to mix, all with zero latency, even when you're using plugins with the Symphony desktop. One of the things I really like about it is it's very sleek, but it also gives you access to all the features that you need for everything you want to do with this desktop interface. You don't necessarily have to have the software in front of you to use it effectively. Let's take a look at the user interface. This is actually a touch screen, and it allows you to select a variety of parameters that you then adjust using the single control knob here on the front panel. And we have multiple screens available depending on what you're looking at. So if we start here, this is kind of the basic screen that shows us our inputs and outputs. We've got input one, input two, stereo output, headphone one, headphone two, and then we can also look at two built-in mixers as well, and we'll come back around to those. Now, when we select our input, we can scroll over to another screen, and here we can access our input gain. Turn that up, turn that down. We could also look at a little different view here if we want to see more what it looks like. We have the same for input two, our outputs. We have level control, mute, dim, and mono summing. For our headphones, same controls, mute, dim, and mono summing, and of course level control as well. Let's go back to one of our inputs and we can scroll to the next screen, and this is where we can set our level. So we can set that to mic, instrument, plus four line level, or minus ten line level. Close that out and go back. We can choose among three different microphone preamp emulations, and we'll look at those when we look at the software. But we have three we can choose among here on this screen, and then we have parameters that can be adjusted right on the Symphony desktop itself. We'll take a closer look at this in the software, but you can also access all those controls right here in the Symphony desktop. That's a very cool feature. Like I said, you don't even have to have the Control 2 software open to be using all these features with the Symphony desktop. And of course, we also have our microphone preamp controls here as well. 48 volt phantom power. We can group the two inputs for stereo recording. We can engage soft limiting to prevent digital overs. And we can also invert the polarity. When we're finished with that, we can jump back to our home screen. As I mentioned, we also have two mixer views here. And this allows us to see the levels of what's happening, where we have our faders set, and so on. So this is mixer two. We can jump to mixer one, easily scroll between the two of those. So everything you need to control the Symphony desktop is right here with this very cool and very ergonomic touchscreen. But to really dig in deep and to get a better perspective of everything we can do with this audio interface, let's jump over to the Control 2 software. So this is our Control 2 software running on my Mac Mini. And I've got Pro Tools also running in the same computer. It's playing back a drum mix that we're monitoring through the Symphony desktop. So let's jump back to the Apogee Control 2 software and take a look at all these features. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have all of our system setup kinds of things. We set our sample rate up to 192 kilohertz. We can set up peak hold and those kinds of things for our metering. We can set up whether our main outputs are variable or whether they're fixed, and so on. So we have a lot of those system settings right here. In fact, we can hide those if we don't want to see them. We have two analog inputs, as we've discussed, and we'll come back around and look at some of the features there. And we also have eight digital inputs, and those are optical format, eight at optical format. We have 10 lines that allow us to bring signal back from Pro Tools or from your DAW that's running in your same computer, and that allows you to create a monitor mix when you're overdubbing. We can see our outputs here. Here's our optical outputs. We've also got our main meter here, headphone output, headphone 2 output, and our stereo output. 
One of the cool things is that there's direct two-way communication between the Symphony desktop and what's happening inside the software as we adjust the controls and parameters. So let's, for example, jump to the main outputs, our stereo outputs, which would normally be feeding studio monitors. We have an output meter up here. We can set it to play back one of the mixer outputs. Depending on what we're doing with the Symphony desktop, whether we're overdubbing, whether we're tracking, or whether we're mixing, we can adjust our source there. You can see that level here, as well as on our main meter. Now, if we scroll over to the next screen, which controls our output settings inside the Symphony desktop, we have direct communication. So as we adjust the level control, you can see the level control changing down here. If we dim the monitors, you can see the dim switch comes on here in the software. So direct control. But a lot of the deep features are over here in the analog input section, analog one and analog two. So let's jump to our main screen here. And again, we can adjust the gain. You can see we've got the gain here. We have 75 dB of gain available in each of those preamps. In addition to the Apogee preamp, we also have two other emulations available. And those are called alloy preamp emulations. This one's the AP66, and it recreates the sound of a British 1066 style preamp. Or we can choose the AP57, which is a tube preamp emulating a uh, vintage Ampex style preamp. So it allows you to add a lot more flavor to your recordings. So we have a lot of versatility here for shaping the tone right at the preamp. At the top of the strip, we can choose our input. That can be mic level, plus four line level, minus 10 line level, or instrument level. We have 48 volt phantom power here. We can group our two channels for stereo. We have soft limiting, which uh, prevents overs in the digital domain when we're tracking. And we also have polarity invert. Down here in the mixer section, which sets up our monitor mix when we're tracking, we can mute, we can solo, and we can stereo link channels as well. But perhaps one of the most important features here are these two effects settings, one here and one here. One's labeled print and one's labeled monitor. And these take advantage of the DSP that's inside the Symphony desktop and also allow you to work back and forth with your DAW. So let's power up these print effects and turn those on. Now the print effects are going to take the signal that's coming in the analog input, route it through the plugin, and then directly into your DAW. So you'll be recording with the effects of whatever plugin you have instantiated here. In this case, I've got the ECS channel strip. This gives us a full EQ, as well as a compressor section, input drive, output level, and so on. And we can save presets as well for different sources that we're working on. So this allows us to print effects as we're tracking, record with those effects. We also have monitor effects down here. Now these look very similar, but you're only going to hear those when you're tracking. They're not actually going to be recorded into your track. This allows you to monitor with the effects in place. So you can hear the effects of the EQ and the compression in this case, but those effects are not going to be recorded into your DAW. So the DAW is still going to be recording the dry track. So that's one way we can use those. We can either print the effects or we can just monitor the effects. But there's another very important feature here, and this is where the dual path idea comes in with the Symphony desktop. So if we jump over here to Pro Tools, and we instantiate that same channel effects plugin. Open that up here. So now we have this set up. Let's go back to the Control 2 software. We've got this set up here as well. Now notice this channel link down here. Let's go back to Pro Tools. And now we can link analog input 1 with this channel, and we're given a choice to keep the DAW channel effect settings, which would be the settings in this version of the plugin, or to keep the hardware channel effect settings, which are the settings for the plugin running in the Symphony. So we can go back and forth and choose whichever one you want to use. So let's choose the hardware channel effect settings. So now what will happen is when we're tracking, the Symphony will automatically know that, hey, I should be using these hardware settings so I have zero latency. When we're done with tracking and we're mixing and playing back, we can access those exact same plugins, those exact same settings running inside Pro Tools in the native domain. So it's really working both ways. In one case, you're recording with the settings. In another case, you're playing back, monitoring, and mixing with the settings. And it's all transparent because in this case, we've linked those channels together. So the Symphony desktop and the Control 2 software knows which one should be used where. It's a super slick way to work because you simply engage recording and you're going. You can use the, uh, use the plugins as you like, and it'll automatically choose whichever one is going to be best from a latency standpoint. This is the Apogee Symphony Desktop Audio Interface. It's a compact, portable desktop-style audio interface that offers 10 inputs, 14 outputs, dual-path recording and monitoring technology, incredible sound quality. Learn more at Sweetwater.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Music